Hi, welcome to Exam Debug. I'm Chris McKenna, and today we're going to be continuing our lessons on systems analysis. So this is the third in our series, and today we're going to be talking about the design phase. So stay tuned to find out more. <laughs> Okay, so the design phase is where we're going to be planning out everything that we're going to be doing in, the, especially in the development stage. So we are, for example, if we were going to make a database, we would just be planning the database at this point in time. And so these are uh, these are all the different things that we might do during that phase. So designing the GUI, the graphical user interface. Uh, we might prepare flowcharts of how we want the system to work. We might have pseudocode. Now, pseudocode is something that we use for programming. So rather than write out the code in full, we might have a sort of planning structure of how the code will look using pseudocode. So um, it would just be simple things like if, then do this, or if, then, for x times, do that. Uh, we wouldn't actually be writing the code, we would just be planning how the code is going to be structured. Validation rules, uh, we're going to come to later on, but making sure our data is valid. Verification methods is verifying that we've copied things correctly. Again, we're going to talk about that in more depth. Uh, test plans, how we're going to test the system, um, and this would tie in to some extent with our um, validation rules. And of course, things like hardware, software requirements, we would need lists um, of things we need. For example, computers, uh, systems unit, monitors, what software, what licenses do we need? And, you know, in full detail as well, you know, you'd have to have the specifications of each of those parts as well. Now, when it comes to the design phase, uh, the two areas we're most likely to be asked about are uh, validation and verification. And you'll often be asked to explain, perhaps, the differences between the two. So we'll start with verification. So verification is making sure that the data is copied correctly. So if we are moving from an old system to a new system, we have to make sure that the data that's stored in the old system uh, is moved correctly without losing any information to the new system. For example, if something was stored in a database and we decide, say we have an access database in the old system, and we decide we're changing to a MySQL database, the verification would be ensuring that the data inside the access database and the MySQL database are the same, that we didn't lose anything transferring it. Now there's two, two methods for doing this. Um, our first one, is a visual check. So this is probably the most obvious, it's, it's almost so obvious that you, you might not think about it right away, which is just, you're just looking and you're checking to see that you've entered and you've copied things correctly. So that's, that's the, maybe the, the standard way that people would do it without thinking. The second option is double data entry. So double data entry is where you have two people entering the same data. And then what we do is we check, we compare those both of those entries to make sure that there are no differences between the two. For example, with the access database and copying to the MySQL one, we would have two different people who are entering the information into the MySQL database. And they're both copying all of the records. So John Smith would be copied twice into the MySQL database. And then if there was any mistakes, for example, if, uh, if one person entered John Smith and the other person entered John Smythe with a small spelling mistake, then the double data entry would help us pick up on any mistakes that are made. But that requires double the work, so it's a lot more effort and it's a lot more time consuming than just checking visually as we go along, just having a quick visual inspection. All right, so let's look at a quick example then. So those of you who have been following will be familiar with Mr. Awesome and his gym. 
He has a paper-based system and he's moving it to a computer-based system. Now, for this information, we could do different types of checks depending on the data we're moving. So things that are not valuable, for example, um, people's training programs. Um, it doesn't really matter that much if there are small mistakes in there. Um, so we could just do a visual check when we copy the paper system to the computer. However, there might be things like payment information, and we want to make sure that that's copied correctly. So we could do the extra check, we could do the double data entry when copying it over, when copying over valuable things like credit card information or other such things. Notice, however, that for verification, um, it does not check to see if the original data has any errors. So, for example, if someone's already copied down a credit card number in here and they've missed one number, that will not be picked up by either visual check or double data entry. Because all we're checking to see is that exactly what is in here is exactly what's going to be copied onto here. Now the second area that often comes up in the exams is going to be validation. So validation is checking that the data fits a certain criteria. So this is the one where you're actually checking it's correct. So verification, you're checking it's been copied correctly. Validation is checking that the actual data itself makes sense. So to do this, um, we have a lot of different checks that can come up. Uh, let's have a quick look at some of those. For example, we might have a presence check. So this is just checking to see has something actually been entered or not. Um, you probably see this a lot on online forums, for example. And if you don't fill in one of the sections and you try to submit, it will come back to you and say, ah, you haven't entered, you haven't entered any information in the postcode section. So you'll have to put it in, otherwise it won't accept. So that's a, that's a presence check. It's checking to see there is something there. Type check is going back to our data types. And so it's looking at, is the data type correct? For example, if you ask for a number, but somebody types in A or B or C, then this would not be the correct type. And so it would respond uh, and say, no, you can't have that there. That's not correct. The yeah. next option is length check. So is it long enough? Now, this is talking about the number of characters. Uh, for example, if I had a code for or a book code, let's say an ISBN, a book code, uh, these all must have an exact number, an exact number of numbers in the code. And so it would check, it would count up the numbers you've entered to see that there are enough or if there's too many. Range and limit check, these, this sounds similar to length check. So length check, we're checking the number of characters. Range check, we're checking the actual data. So for example, if the range is 80 to 100, you're checking that the value is inside that range. Now that length doesn't matter. It's to do with the range of the data inside. Uh, limit check is similar to range check, except it's only checking one end. So uh, range check would be 80 to 100, whereas limit check would just be less than 100 or greater than 50, or something like this. So this is checking both sides and this is only checking one side. The last one, which we're not going to go into too much detail about, is a check digit. Uh, this is going to come up later, and you should know this, but we won't do it as part of today's class. Um, a check digit is a mathematical calculation based on the other numbers that are already um, part of the code. So for example, this number here, we would do some sort of mathematics on it, and it would calculate a new number, this number 5, and this number at the end would be the check digit. 
again, you'll see this on things like ISBN codes and barcodes a lot of the time, if you look. Now, these are just a few of them. Um, I don't want to bore you with too many. So, can you go and have a look online, see which other ones you can find. And if you can, you can post comments uh, below and tell us which ones you have. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. Um, in the exam, it's quite common for them to give you an object or a topic and they will ask you to come up with suitable validation rules for that particular one. So, um, let's see. Um, in this case, we're going to be talking about a credit card. So, Mr. Awesome's gym, he has to get payment cards from his customers and he wants to keep that information in his database. So, what validation checks might he do? See if you can come up with some. Have a pause. All right, so let's have a look. So we could have a length check. So we know that the credit card has, off the top of my head, I think 16 numbers. I might be wrong on that. Um, so we could have a length check to check that there are 16 characters on the credit card, or however many there actually are. We could have a type check. So those numbers, we want to make sure they're actually numbers and that somebody hasn't just put A, B, C, D instead of putting in credit card numbers there as well. Um, we could also have a check digit. So before we start trying to send the process uh, to the bank, we, before we even contact the bank, we could have a check on the credit cards using the other digits to make sure that the numbers all match up. That way, if someone has entered a mistake somewhere, then the check digit will show that they've typed the wrong number as one of the numbers on their card. Good. So um, you've all been working, hopefully, uh, those that have been following along on your own uh, companies. So can you think about your company? Can you pick maybe one or two areas and try and come up with validation checks for your own company. Okay, good. So that's us for today. Um, so this is we're covering design and you should be clear on validation and verification. These are your main the main things that you have to pick up from today. The next class we're going to be looking at the development and testing phase. Um, so keep an eye out for that video coming soon. Uh, please uh, subscribe. You can check out examdebug.com and if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Uh, good luck with your exams.